Today we're going to be ranking every single non-sunset hand cannon in Destiny 2 into a tier list for PvP. By the end of this video, you're going to have a pretty good idea about which ones are worth going after and mastering, and which ones are just not so good. Before we get into the specific rankings, let me explain how I evaluated these hand cannons. First off, this tier list is looking at the overall effectiveness of these weapons across all the major PvP modes. That means that we're evaluating their effectiveness in Trials of Osiris, Iron Banner, Survival, Rumble, and Casual 6v6 modes. Next up, this also means that I'm not going to be looking at Sunset Hand Cannons since you normally don't want to use those in Trials or Iron Banner since they can't get up to the maximum power level. Also, this video would just end up being way too long. This tier list is mostly from the point of view of a mouse and keyboard player. However, I know that many of you do play on controller, and if the hand cannons perform differently based on the input device, I'll mention it wherever I can, but the final rankings are going to be based on mouse and keyboard just to keep it consistent. Finally, let me emphasize that pretty much all hand cannons are meta contenders, and good players can do well with basically anything on this list. In my opinion, putting every single hand cannon into either A or S tier just doesn't make much sense and it really isn't helpful. So I've decided to make the requirements on a hand cannon to get into the S tier to be very very high. Also, since the majority of hand cannons are quite similar in performance, I decided to split the A tier into the A plus and A minus tiers just to give a better idea of which hand cannons would give you the edge when they're pretty close in performance. For the lower tiers, that didn't really seem necessary, because you mostly want to avoid those hand cannons if you're going for optimal performance in PvP. I'm going to do my best to update the pinned comment if we receive any major balance patches that affect these hand cannons after publishing this video. And that's it, let's get into the tier list in alphabetical order starting with the Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades is an exotic 140 RPM hand cannon in the kinetic slot, and wow. wow. If you could mash every single perk into one hand cannon, you wouldn't get much more than the Ace of Spades. Firefly doubles as Dragonfly and Outlaw, and Memento Mori, the exotic perk, functions basically as a shot-based instead of time-based kill clip, which is absurdly strong. Essentially, you can run around with the damage profile of a 120 RPM hand cannon at the rate of fire of a 140, provided you get just one kill and then reload. Also, Memento Mori lets you keep your radar up even when you're aiming down sights. Ace comes with excellent stats overall, a gigantic magazine of 13 bullets, high caliber rounds for the extra flinch, and a beautiful aesthetic, making it a fearsome hand cannon even without that exotic perk Memento Mori product. The main downsides are that although it has good range for a 140, it does lack rangefinder which holds it back by just a few meters, which can kind of hurt you in those longer range duels, especially against those 120 RPM hand cannons. And because it's an exotic, it doesn't have the ability to slot an Icarus mod, which does hurt its effectiveness while you're jumping. I did say I was going to be harsh when considering candidates for the S tier, and since Ace of Spades is a 140 which currently struggles to keep up with the range of those 120s despite being absolutely packed with perks, I have to put it in the A plus tier. If 120s ever get a range nerf though, you can bet that this one is going straight to the S tier. Nonetheless, it's a fantastic choice for any playlist. Ancient Gospel is a legendary 140 RPM energy hand cannon from the Garden of Salvation Raid. It has all around good sets, a healthy perk pool, and a very polarizing aesthetic. In other words, this hand cannon is thick. And it's somewhat obstructive on the lower part of your screen which kind of hurts that visibility. You can get rolls like Rapid Hit Kill Clip or Slide Shot Range Finder which makes this a very good hand cannon. However, Season of the Chosen has brought us some fierce contenders in the energy slot which does make it a bit harder for the Ancient Gospel to compete. So that only is going to land it in the B tier despite having some solid stats and some really great roll potentials. However, if you're a fan of that model and you get a really good roll, definitely don't hesitate to try it out as it's certainly a fantastic hand cannon. Bottom Dollar is a new legendary 120 RPM hand cannon in the energy slot which is brought to us in the Season of the Chosen. Well, honestly, I guess it was only brought to those who were chosen by the Drifter, you could say. All right, all right, all right. The bottom dollar comes with a massive 12 perk options in both of the last two columns. Combining this with a low drop chance and being only available from the Gambit playlist basically means that you need to have RNGs in your corner to get that god roll. Fortunately though, it's highly likely that you're going to get something serviceable as the majority of the bottom dollar perks are actually pretty good. You can get stuff like Slide Shot Rampage, Rapid Hit and Multi Kill Clip, Rangefinder and Explosive Payload, and the very rare combination of Slide Shot and High Impact Reserves. If you manage to net that roll, you'll be able to 2 tap Guardians at 40 resilience or less from the bottom half of your magazine. Bottom Dollar has decent stats and barrel options, which can each strongly influence those stats. It's also one of the only hand cannons that can roll with Thresh, which now works in PvP to grant that extra super energy. 
Being Void, Bottom Dweller synergizes really nicely with the Nezarek Sin exotic, which also yields some really nice build making options, and you should probably know that if you've been following my channel. All in all, the Bottom Dollar is an excellent hand cannon and it deserves a spot up in the A plus tier. I almost put this one in the S tier, but I think it falls just shy of another hand cannon coming up soon. Kermel's Dagger is a legendary 120 RPM hand cannon from the Iron Banner. It comes with decent base stats, and it's very interesting since it can roll with both Kill Clip and Rangefinder. Kill Clip is arguably the best damage perk in the game, which is especially lethal on the 120 RPM hand cannons since it can sometimes kill with a combination of just a headshot and a body shot. And Rangefinder allows you to fight at absolutely crazy distances before you experience that damage drop off. Together, this means that the Criminal's Dagger is a beast for getting those two tap kills. Unfortunately though, Criminal's only comes with 7 shots in the mag, which is kind of a bummer, but it's honestly quite okay with Kill Clip since you're probably going to be reloading often anyway. It also pairs incredibly well with exotics like the Dragon Shadow or the Marksman Stodge on Hunter so that you can quickly reload to mitigate that small magazine while also giving yourself that Kill Clip damage bonus after the reload. I also love the model of this hand cannon compared to some of those boxier looking ones like the True Prophecy. It's really clean and easy to use and it looks amazing with the iridescent coral shader. In short, it's an excellent 120 RPM hand cannon with access to Kill Clip and Rangefinder and that's why I rank it in the A plus tier. Crimson is an exotic 3 shot burst hand cannon and spoiler alert, I have some pretty harsh words for this one. Crimson has a damage model that's kind of similar to the 390 RPM pulse rifle archetype and its exotic perk heals the wielder upon kill. This sounds quite nice in theory, but in practice it's kind of a whole different story. I've always felt that Crimson gets sort of the bad end of being both a pulse rifle and a hand cannon hybrid. The 3 round burst just makes this hand cannon more difficult to peak shot with, taking away from the key advantage of being a hand cannon. Let me explain. One of the biggest benefits of regular hand cannons is that they deliver huge chunks of damage with just a single bullet, which allows you to utilize your movement to get behind cover between shots. However, since it's a 3 round burst like a pulse rifle, you'd expect it to have much more range as a trade off for losing that peak shot ability. And unfortunately, even with the catalyst, it still only reaches about 33 meters before damage drop off kicks in. And at that range, the recoil can make it a bit tough to consistently land a full burst on mouse and keyboard. The model is also extremely bulky and very difficult to aim since it kicks into your face and partially hides the target while it's recoiling. Despite the benefits of auto reloading after a headshot kill and returning health from any kill, the lack of range while adopting the cons of a pulse rifle landed in the C tier for me. However, I know that my controller playing friends tend to rank this one a lot higher, since the problem of the recoil hiding that target for us mouse and keyword players isn't nearly as big for you guys on the sticks. And I know you controller mains tend to feel like this hand cannon is quite sticky. Pun sort of intended. In that case, it's probably closer to A tier for you controller players. Dire Promise is a legendary 140 RPM hand cannon which was a community top pick in PvP prior to Beyond Light. Dire excelled at the top of the meta for a few seasons before the nerf to the 150 RPM hand cannons and it still performs great even after the conversion to a 140. Its main draw is that exceptionally high aim assist stat with otherwise decent perks and good stats overall. In particular, it can roll with both opening shot and rangefinder which makes up for an otherwise mediocre range stat. With both of these perks combined on a max range roll, your damage drop off is pushed all the way out to roughly 39 meters for that opening shot. There are also a few niche uses of Dire resulting in a 2 tap potential while utilizing Swashbuckler on classes like the Striker Titan and Stasis with the Whisper of Hedron's buff. Also Dire gets some extra credit for being your only legendary kinetic choice if you want to use a 140 RPM hand cannon. This is important because you can pair Dire with an energy slot weapon like the Felwinter's Lie or the Frozen Orbit Sniper Rifle. Both of these are considered to be top picks in PvP. All in all, Dire in my opinion is on the boundary between B and A- tier, and what pushes it over the edge is the uniqueness in the kinetic slot and the ability to roll with opening shot and rangefinder, which helps it challenge the range of those 120 RPM hand cannons. So we're going to rank this one in the A- tier. Hawkmoon is an exotic 140 RPM hand cannon that goes kaka. Besides the unique sound, Hawkmoon is special in many ways. It's the only exotic hand cannon with the ability to get random rolls, and this means that we can min-max our Hawkmoon however we like, on top of the already very good stats. Hawkmoon's catalyst is also very strong, it gives it extra range and handling, and on top of the random perks and crazy stats, we have Hawkmoon's exotic perk, Paracausal Shot. This will stack up with every headshot or kill that we land, and it unleashes all those stored stacks as a damage buff on your last shot of the magazine. This gets so powerful that you can even pull off a one-shot body shot kill at 7 stacks. And if you get lucky, you can even line up a few targets at the same time to get a collateral kill. 
The main downsides are a slightly smaller magazine size at just 9 bullets, even with the catalyst, and because it's an exotic, it can't slot the Icarus mod which hurts it a bit in the air. Come on Bungie, it's a hand cannon modeled after a bird. It wants to be in the air, why can't it have Icarus? I digress. Overall, I rank Hawkmoon very highly, however in my eyes it's still slightly outclassed by the sheer stopping power of Ace of Spades and the range and 2 tap potential of those 120 RPM hand cannons, which is why I rank Hawkmoon in the A- tier. Igneous Hammer Well, if you don't know what the Igneous Hammer is, you've probably been living under a rock and you need to start watching more videos, because it's a 120 RPM hand cannon that has been recently added to the Trials of Osiris loot pool. It's been both a blessing and a curse since players are finally incentivized to go play Trials, yet only the best players, or maybe those lucky casino goers, are going to have access to the Adept version of the hammer. With the Adept form which only drops from the Flawless Chest in the Trials of Osiris, Igneous Hammer can get an incredible mix of range, stability, and handling, all while having Rampage and the ability to 2-tap. Just think about how crazy this is for a second. It has the range of a pulse rifle combined with the stability of a 140 hand cannon and the snappiness of those former lightweight hand cannons, all matched together with an absolutely lethal 0.5 second time to kill after Rampage kicks in. If having a balanced stat mix isn't really your style, you can also max out the range set to a full 100 range while still keeping Rampage for those sweet sweet 2 taps at an incredible distance. Since it can drop as an adept hand cannon, it also has access to the adept Icarus mod, which gives it additional range while still providing that inner accuracy benefit from Icarus. With all these benefits taken into consideration, Igneous Hammer is in my opinion the only S tier hand cannon in the current meta. Given the right role, Igneous is ahead of the competition and has earned its place in the S tier. The Ikelos hand cannon is an energy slot 180 RPM hand cannon. Unfortunately, the 180 archetype of hand cannons is in a tough spot. They get very little range, they have a bad base time to kill, and the recoil model kind of hides the target making it difficult to see. The main draw of hand cannons is how they can cause a lot of damage in a very short window of time. This allows you to use cover to maximize your outgoing damage while minimizing incoming damage. With 180s you just can't do this as effectively compared to other archetypes, and the weapon model is so bulky that it jumps in front of the enemy's model while you're shooting which makes it very difficult to see your target. Unfortunately for the Igolos hand cannon, it doesn't come with great perks either, although there is a pretty special combination of slideways and high impact reserves. High impact gives you a little bit of extra damage at the end of your magazine, and slideways allows you to partially reload your magazine to get those extra shots in. The synergy here is nice, but it's not enough damage to allow you to 3 crit a player in Crucible. You're only going to be able to pull off a 1 headshot 3 body shot kill. Probably the best thing it has going for it is that it also has Rampage which can 3 tap guardians at 40 resilience or lower with just 1 stack. For PvP, the Ikelos hand cannon lands in the D tier. I do want to make an honorable mention when it comes to PvE, since it does have the ability to produce those Warmind cells and synergizes really nicely with the Nezarek Sin. Unfortunately though in PvP, we can't create those Warmind cells, so Ikelos stays in the D tier. Lumina is an exotic 140 RPM hand cannon. It's a very special hand cannon as it's the only weapon in the game with a strictly supportive function. There's really no two ways about it, Lumina as a hand cannon strictly speaking is just not that great. It only has 50 range with a moderate 56 stability and kind of mediocre perks. Where Lumina starts to shine though is in a team scenario thanks to its exotic perk. Getting a kill will spawn one or two orbs depending on if you have the catalyst or not, and when you pick up those orbs they grant noble rounds to Lumina. These can be hip fired out to teammates which will grant both you and them a damage buff for 10 seconds. It will also heal your teammate who touches the orb. This synergizes beautifully with the Warlock's Middle Tree Dawnblade subclass since buffing your teammates will activate the Benevolent Dawn perk and get you a massive chunk of your abilities back. Lumina also synergizes with many weapons like high impact sniper rifles or grenade launchers since that damage buff can get you some easier kills. The downfall of Lumina though is its reliance on having teammates nearby so you can take advantage of the perk. In 6v6 play with uncoordinated blueberries, it can be extremely frustrating to make the perk do its thing since often your teammates will be scattered all over the place. However, in coordinated 3v3 groups, it does have some more potential. Still though, it's hard to pick this one over the more lethal options since it does require a kill to become useful. We have to give Lumina some credit for the team synergy, but still, I rank Lumina pretty low in the C tier. If you're enjoying this video by the way, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I have a number of tier list style videos coming your way soon that you won't want to miss, and you can always change your mind later. Malfeasance is an exotic 180 RPM hand cannon with an inexcusable flaw. You might recall that all precision frame hand cannons come with the Icarus Grip mod intrinsically, right? Well, wrong. Malfeasance doesn't really seem to. 
Watch here how the balls distribute while you're in the air compared side by side with a normal precision frame hand cannon. You can see how much tighter the groupings are on the normal hand cannon. The big upside to Malfeasance though is the ability to kill in just 5 body shots regardless of the range. That's thanks to the exotic perk which causes targets to explode when they're hit by 5 slugs. It also has a very large magazine which comes in handy. The exotic perk is great in a team environment when a few teammates are using his hand cannon together since it only requires a total of 5 slugs to be landed for that explosion effect. The exotic perk also makes it decent against some of those roaming supers thanks to the extra damage, but any good player with strong movement will likely still kill you before you're able to shut them down. Overall, Malfeasance is a fairly bad hand cannon and you probably should avoid using it unless you have a very special build in mind. This is why, in my opinion, Malfeasance lands in the D tier. Nation of Beasts is a 140 RPM hand cannon from the Last Wish raid. Think of it as the evil little brother of the Ancient Gospel. Why evil? Nation of Beasts, in fact, is the only 140 hand cannon with the ability to roll explosive payload. It allows you to tag enemies with damage behind corners, and it reduces your damage falloff. But most of all, it produces a big flash and a lot of flinch on your enemy's screen. I'm not personally a huge fan of the reticle and the looks while aiming on sights. Something about it is a bit awkward for me to aim with, but it's not that big of a deal. Otherwise, this handgun is pretty decent in the stats department, which is why I rate it in the B tier, just like Ancient Gospel. Nature of the Beast, not to be confused with Nation of Beast, is an energy 180 RPM hand cannon from the World Loot Pool. Immediately, because it's a 180, it lands pretty low on my list. As with all other 180s, this one's pretty bad. Although, if I was forced to choose one, it might be actually this one, since the aesthetic is not quite as obstructive as the other precision frames when it comes to the model kicking up in your face. Usually that hides the target and is really frustrating for me. It also does have access to Rangefinder, which can kind of help mitigate some of that poor range stat. As I mentioned earlier, the big problem with the 180 RPM hand cannons at the moment is that they have a pretty slow overall time to kill at a full 1 second, but they don't offer the same range advantage of those 120s. This puts them in a weird spot where they aren't really that great for team shooting from range, but they also lose out to the 140 hand cannons as dueling weapons because of that slower time to kill. I think they need some adjustments, but that's for a different video. With the lack of damage perks and the relatively poor stats, Nature of the Beast stays in the D tier for now. I do know that some controller players prefer that precision frame recoil over the mouse and keyboard players, and in that case we might rank it a bit higher. Posterity is a hand cannon very similar to Nature of the Beast but from the Deepstone Crypt Raid. Yeah, it comes with some nice perks like Rampage, but just as I mentioned before, the 180 archetype is in a pretty bad spot right now. With this hand cannon in particular, the model jumps right in front of your enemy making it really hard to see your target. For me, Posterity ranks no higher than the other 180s as overall they have the worst range, handling, and peak shot ability of all hand cannons, which really isn't a good thing. As with the other 180s, I know controller players may rank this a bit higher because of the easier to control recoil, but many of the best controller players I know do tend to favor the 120s because of that range and 2-tap potential. For mouse and keyboard users, we're definitely putting this one in the D tier. The 7th Seraph Officer Revolver is yet another 180 RPM hand cannon. Did you hear that? 180 RPM. You can probably guess where this one's going. But before we write this one off just like the others, let me mention one interesting note with this hand cannon. It's the only 180 with the ability to roll time payload. This perk can be even nastier than the explosive payload since it flinches your enemy twice on two different occasions. This is extremely annoying on the receiving end. However, it does slightly extend your effective time to kill unless you manage to land all four straight headshots. So there is a bit of a trade-off and you're hoping that the extra flinch causes your enemy to miss their shots. Just like with the other 180s, we're putting this one in the D tier until the archetype as a whole gets an adjustment. Let me quickly mention that this is the only other hand cannon that directly produces Warmind Cells in PvE. Still, Warmind Cells don't work in PvP, so the Officer Revolver stays in the D tier for now. Sturm is one of my favorite 120 RPM hand cannons in the game, especially with the ornament Dream of a New World which looks so clean. It has a unique pairing with its sidearm counterpart Drang, where every kill with the sidearm produces an overcharge bullet for Sturm. However, the performance of Sturm all by itself is actually pretty stellar. These overcharged bullets deal major damage in PvP which can often be enough to kill a weakened Guardian or lead to an easy cleanup kill with Drang which then starts the cycle all over again by powering up your Sturm. Kills with Sturm also then reload Drang. 
The cool thing about the overcharged bullets is that they do stack with other damage buffs in PvP like Empowering Rifts, the Titan Slide, Well of Radiance, Weapons of Light from a Titan Bubble, Whisper of Hedrons from Stasis, or even the Charge with Light mod High Energy Fire. These combinations of additional damage will often provide you with a one-shot kill with Sturm, which is incredibly satisfying. In fact, one of my absolute favorite Warlock builds uses a buffed up Sturm with the Luna Faction Boots to boost that range and turn it into sort of a hand cannon sniper deagle hybrid. Aside from the interaction with Drang, Sturm has some excellent base stats, especially with the exotic catalyst unlocked. The end result is a 120 RPM hand cannon that has the recoil and handling feeling of a 140 and a gigantic magazine size of 12. The biggest downside of Sturm is that it lacks a damage buff so it can't two tap natively unless you're pairing it with a damage source like those we mentioned earlier. It also lacks the ability to slot an Icarus mod since it's an exotic, but luckily the inner accuracy isn't too bad even without Icarus. With all these reasons in mind, I'm going to rank Sturm in the A plus tier as one of the best hand cannon options currently in the game. Sunshot is a very explosive hand cannon, quite literally. It's currently the only 150 RPM hand cannon in the game, which makes it pretty special. With its catalyst, it has very high stats and it also comes inherently with both explosive payload and a supercharged version of Dragonfly. Essentially, you get the flinch and splash damage of explosive payload, but you also get a Dragonfly explosion on every kill, even a body shot kill or a splash damage kill. Unfortunately, the explosions and visual effects are so big that it kind of becomes difficult to see your reticle, and it's also difficult to see what you're shooting at. Also, Sunshot has a unique recoil animation, which makes it seem much less stable than it really is. As you can see here, the gun recoils backwards towards you more than it does vertically like you're going to see on most other weapons. Given enough practice, you can get good enough to overcome this problem, but it's still pretty difficult to consistently land every shot at the maximum rate of fire. This is made even more difficult by the extremely low aim assist of only 60. When the balance patch notes associated with Beyond Light came out and Sunshot was announced to be the only 150 RPM hand cannon left in the game, many people thought that this would instantly push it to the top of the meta, but in reality, you almost never see it in the Crucible, and I think that's mostly thanks to the issues that we just mentioned. With all this in mind, we're putting Sunshot in the B tier. The last word is an exotic hand cannon in the kinetic slot that shoots at a blistering fast 225 RPM. Yeah, you heard that right, a 225 RPM hand cannon. This cowboy gun has historically been one of my favorite weapons in all of FPS gaming. I absolutely fell in love with it back in Destiny 1, and it had some moments of dominance upon its return in Destiny 2, but unfortunately it's not the greatest option for mouse and keyboard players in its current state. It has 8 bullets in the mag and it does increased damage when you're shooting from the hip. Its exotic perk, Fanfire, provides additional accuracy as you keep landing those shots, which is really noticeable. The optimal range of this hand cannon is no more than about 18 meters, though it does compensate with a lightning fast time to kill of just 0.53 seconds with 3 hipfire headshots landed for triple 69s. Nice. The performance of the last word varies strongly between controller and mouse and keyboard. On mouse and keyboard, it's extraordinarily difficult to land your shots consistently, let alone headshots, since it seems to have very little forgiveness compared to other weapons in Destiny that are just oozing with aim assist. Shots from the last word have the tendency to flat out miss their target unless they're aimed perfectly. I know that my friend Cakes and a few other talented players are still a big fan of the last word even on mouse and keyboard, and I don't think they're wrong about that. With sufficient skill and practice, you can still make the last word work quite well. Although I would argue that the effort required to master this weapon is probably better invested elsewhere. For the average Joe, almost any other hand cannon will perform far better. If you're dying for that hipfire shooting experience, the new Scout Rifle Deadman's Tail with its catalyst is quite a bit easier to land shots with. Thus, for mouse and keyboard users, the last word lands in the C tier. For controller players, however, this is a whole different story. The reticle friction that controller players experience makes aiming the last word much more forgiving during hipfire. Having access to your radar, the faster strafe speed while hip firing, and the blazing fast triple headshot time to kill provides basically everything that you could possibly want from a close range weapon. Therefore, controller players can enjoy this truly S tier machine gun of a hand cannon. The Palindrome is a new 140 RPM hand cannon brought to us with the Season of the Chosen, and it's a beauty. Destiny veterans should remember the Palindrome from back in the Destiny 1 days is a top pick in PvP, and its return to Destiny 2 has been just as glorious. The Palindrome has the highest base stats of all 140 RPM hand cannons in the game, and it has the ability to get some very nice rolls with the available perks. In its Adept form, which only drops from Grandmaster Nightfalls, it's the highest range 140 RPM hand cannon in the game, 
with the ability to hit max damage all the way out to somewhere around 38 meters. Also, you can get a more balanced roll to include the three main stats, range, stability, and handling all above 75. The Palindrome is currently the only legendary 140 RPM hand cannon that's able to get Killing Wind combined with Range Finder, which is an elite perk combination. Killing Wind gives you a bit of extra range after the kill and increases that magnetism and handling of the Palindrome by a crazy amount. And if you're not into Killing Wind, you can also go with Quick Draw, which is an S tier perk. Palindrome, in my opinion, is by far the best legendary 140 RPM hand cannon in the game with its amazing stats and perk pool, and it's certainly able to compete with beasts like the Ace of Spades, which is why I'm going to rank Palindrome in the A plus tier. The Steady Hand is a legendary 120 RPM hand cannon from the Iron Banana, or Iron Banner, which is another one of the way too many hand cannons sharing the boxy model of better devils. Come on Bungie, we don't mind reusing weapon models once in a while, but how many more times can we make this brick design into a new hand cannon at this point? To make up for the lack of design creativity though, the Steady Hand has some really nice perks for a 120, and almost none of them are particularly bad. Swashbuckler is the only damage perk on the Steady Hand, and while it's not able to two-tap guardians at all resiliences, it allows for some really creative playmaking potential, especially when combined with some long-range melee options like the Celestial Fire Dawnblade Wrist Rocket or the Hunter's Plethora of Throwing Knives. Also, the Steady Hand can roll Iron Grip, which will give a plus 20 boost to stability at the cost of reload speed. This, together with Slide Shot, which reloads two bullets per slide, can produce a very easy to control 120 RPM hand cannon, which is really good for game modes like Trials of Osiris. Unfortunately, the Steady Hand only has 8 shots on the mag, which is a bummer, but it can be mitigated with perks like Outlaw or exotic armor choices like the Dragon Shadow or a Fitting Aspect for the faster reloads. Overall, the Steady Hand has many nice roll options and it's a great hand cannon, which is why I'm going to rank it in the A plus tier. Thorn is an exotic 140 RPM adaptive hand cannon, which is not too dissimilar from Lumina. Thorn's unique perk does damage over time to tag targets, allowing you to get a kill with two headshots and one body shot, albeit with a delay, on guardians running less than 60 resilience. Just like Lumina, Thorn creates a remnant on kill which increases the damage over time, allowing you to get a very easy 1 crit 2 body kill, and on some resiliences you can outright 2 tap. The big downside of these orbs though is that you need to go over to them and grab them to get the damage buff, which can put you in danger and certainly doesn't have the convenience of those Memento Mori bullets on Ace of Spades. It does however partially reload your magazine, which is a nice touch. Unfortunately, Thorn just like Lumina has a very poor range set and no mod slot, which severely handicaps it. There have been rumors of a catalyst that would greatly buff the range and stability for quite a while now, but that's not something that currently exists in the game. If such a catalyst ever does present itself, it would be a total game changer for Thorn and push its usage way up in the meta. Thorn does give you the advantage of delaying your opponent's recovery and also delaying the opponent from being able to perform a revive in Trials of Osiris, and it also provides you with sort of a poor man's wall hack since you can see the damage numbers ticking through walls, which can be quite useful. Thorn as a hand cannon is certainly stronger than Lumina, but it's not quite up to the same level that it experienced in previous metas. This is especially considering its relatively poor range set when you're comparing it to those 120 sniper rifle hand cannon hybrids found in almost every PvP match, which is why I'm going to rank this one in the B tier. True Prophecy is like an ancestor to the Steady Hand. It's a kinetic legendary 120 RPM hand cannon with good stats, good perks, and the awkward trait of being incredibly frustrating to obtain. Please Gunsmith, just give me the goods. Its only damage perk is Rampage, which is arguably just as good as Swashbuckler if not better in some situations. It also comes with some nice perks like Opening Shot or Range Finder to push out that maximum range, and it has 9 shots in the mag which is pretty good for a 120. It can also drop with Overflow which can synergize quite nicely with Rampage. It autoloads your hand cannon and gives you a crazy magazine size of 18 or more bullets just for picking up some special or heavy ammo. Overall, True Prophecy is a very nice 120 RPM hand cannon, very similar to the Steady Hand, which is why I'm ranking it in the A plus tier. Waking Vigil is a 140 RPM hand cannon in the energy slot. Honestly, the stats on this hand cannon are not particularly great, but it does have a reasonably high aim assist stat, which is nice. The biggest thing going for it is the ability to roll with both rangefinder and opening shot to have a beefy range potential on your first shot. You can also roll with things like kill clip to reduce the headshot requirement on follow-up kills, or snapshot to make it feel a bit snappier. With the relatively mediocre base stats and nothing especially great about this hand cannon, we're going to put this one right in the middle in the B tier. I wanted to make a quick note about our results here. 
As you can tell, the totem pole of hand cannons, generally speaking, turns out to be 120s on top, 140s in the middle, and 180s at the bottom. Probably not too surprising for most players who have been spending a decent amount of time in the Crucible lately. However, if 120s get a bit of balance tuning and perhaps lose some of that incredible range, I think that the S through B tier could become incredibly compressed. But I guess that's for Bungie to decide. What's that? Did you think I missed one? Oh, you mean that crazy one with a fire coming out of the barrel that hits like a truck? The exotic Ariana's Vow? Ah. Although that one doesn't exactly fit into this list nicely since it requires special ammo instead of primary ammo, I know a bunch of you guys will probably ask about it in the comments, so I figured I might as well put it somewhere. It's basically closer to a sniper rifle than a hand cannon, and with the right damage buffs it can outright kill in one headshot which is incredibly fun. It's also a great pairing with a 120 hand cannon in the Hunter Boots Lucky Pants since you can quick swap between the Vow and the 120 to get some really fast and easy kills. Pretty fun. I guess we'll put this one in the A- tier. If you like this video, I think you'd really enjoy a series I did ranking every exotic in the game into a tier list for PvP. It's the video up on the top right of your screen and also linked in the description.